Hey everyone, I'm in such a good mood. I have just found out I have another 10-15 minutes hopefully time to film another tutorial. So you hate to me. I just finished filming on the foliage and I had so much fun. So go and have a look. I have now um, designed this new stamp set. I'm just gonna show you the new one, <coughs> as in the, the one that hasn't been opened. So the idea here is you can create your own botanicals, you can create your own uh, botanical illustrations and um, like floral clusters and all of that. So today I'm going to show you how to create a floral cluster. You can also create just green leaves and leave it just as a standalone illustration or you can add them to other things. So today I'm going to show you a nice and easy floral cluster. The one that I have here is a little bit complicated so I'm thinking of something a little bit simpler today and basically you have here some elements that can be doubled as petals so I have used one of these now I don't remember which one for the flower and also I think this one or that one for the eucalyptus leaf as well so you can really change them so some of them have been used as petals here for the water lily as well as the leaves as little elements to the floral cluster so without further ado i'm going to also show you today how you can transform my watercolor set the ultimate palette which is available both of the products i'm showing you today are available on my website alonacreates.com it feels so good to now say my own website where everything is available fantastic so um, I will use Opera Rose today, which is basically Opera Pink. Just uh, go into your watercolor stash and find a tube or a half pan of um, Opera Pink. And just to help you, the pigment is PR122. So that's your Opera Pink. Doesn't matter which brand, they're all kind of very similar. So I'll tell you a little secret. I was actually planning originally to use opera pink in my set but it would not be uh, then light fast and it was very important for me to come out with a professional watercolor set which has all the colors that are light fast so this is the reason why i couldn't include it and i have then included a beautifully granulating strawberry velvet which is my own mix doesn't exist anywhere else it's very unique to my palette and i've used it here with the mix of uh the cobalt teal so check it out but nothing stops you from adding um opera pink to the palette and using it together so that's what i'm going to show you so to start with i will uh add i'll go with this smaller Actually, I used it already. Let me let me do this one. So it's the smaller round petal or leaf out of the four. And what I will do is I will build a flower. Now, the way I work with my stamping sets is I use them as little helpers. So I like to stamp with a nude colored ink, which is actually this ink is water water soluble so it's not it's not going to like hold up its line if you go over it but that doesn't matter to me because i am going to add watercolor and in effect i don't want the ink to be visible i want it to be like not visible if that makes sense so just layering i'm going to do five petal flower and to layer you just wipe off the edge of the ink now if you used a black ink to do this with that means that what would happen is you'd have black lines and you know it would be kind of overlining so you probably don't want that Okay, so that's that, and then let me use a center, and I have a few options for you in this set. So we've got a small center here with the three dots and then a few dots. 
So this one you can stamp straight black if you wish. And then what you're going to do is stamp a few of them because it's a bigger area. So it's fine to overlay it a few times and you get a nice center here. And then what we're going to do next is add a few foliage pieces. So in this case, I'm going to use this one. It's the biggest. So I used it here already. And then I'm just going to, again, if I want to overlay things, I'm just going to wipe the line slightly like that. And if I want to hide them a bit, then I just wipe the corner and go like that. If some of the lines are going over each other, that doesn't really matter because it's nude ink. And then I'm going to use this element right here. Loads and loads of options. Have I mentioned that this is a new stamp set that I have designed to help you create beautiful, easy botanical uh, illustrations, clusters or uh, just different type of leaves, flowers, all sorts. So I'm just going to add a couple of these. So three on one side, two on this side. And then we've got these kind of like berry looking illustrations, which you can keep plain as they are, like black and white, or you could add color into them. So let's add a couple of those. I'm just going to rotate to see where I like it most. I'll add one here. one here and then I'll maybe add a couple of the smaller bits right here there's also so if I turn it around you've got smaller elements like that and then you've got another berry element here so these are more fiddly but they're good space fillers again you can just go in straight with black So if there's something where you don't want to add too much, you can just add a couple of them here and there. Also, you can build them up so you can create, for example, if I just show you, just adding them on top of each other. You can totally build a bigger cluster of them. So I think this is what I'm going to do. It's hard for you to see probably right now, but I will give you a close up just in a second. And there's something here I need. Maybe I'll go with it here as well. that's it okay so this could carry on and on you could just build and build and build and add more as you go uh, but I think for now I'm just going to add some berries I was planning it to be a lot simpler but once you start you really want to just build upon it because it's so easy all you need to do is just uh, stamp the images really so here we go kind of filling the areas up that's because I have twos and I don't want to have twos I want to have a three okay so here we go like that all right so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to line out all of what I have drawn. As I'm going, I'm just going to see where I need to extend the line to connect things. 
and making sure I'm not overlining petals and things like that. Once I've done that, I will meet you for the watercolor portion of this tutorial. So let me just show you what we built so far. This is like a hibiscus type of a flower. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so that took me about 10 minutes to do. It was really actually relaxing just to just to meld into the illustration and just, you know, add all these details that I don't need to think about. They're ready there. All I need to do is just line them out. And like I said, if you want to save some time for these black elements, you can just straight away um, stamp them with black. But even then, I still prefer to line them out. Okay, let's dive into the watercolor portion of things. So for the flower, let's get some of this beautiful opera pink. And I am going to add my strawberry velvet. I had a bit of cobalt teal in there, so I'm going to take that out and add it a little bit into here. So that's a gorgeous color. It's still bright and luminous, but a little bit more toned down. So you might as well get to see some of the beautiful granulation and pigment separation because my strawberry velvet has Potter's pink in there. So I'll do three leaves at a time. Might be a good idea to separate the leaves a little bit and just do every other leaf, but it's too late for that now. Okay, and now just with clean brush, I'm just going to touch it and wiggle it all the way to the base of the petal, like so. And as always, leaving some of the white of the paper. Yes, yeah, so in the dish, in the tray, you can see Potter's pink separation here. So hopefully we'll see it in the illustration as well. Do it relatively quick because you don't want all of the pigments drying up and then you won't be able to pull any of the uh, pigment. And then I'll do the same here. <clears throat> Even if you find it's drying a bit, just add a bit of dubbing dubbing motion and that way you'll get some of the pigment moving. Okay, so. We're doing our last petal now. And then same thing as before. Basically, you don't want a hard edge. So, if you see a hard edge, just wiggle your brush and just get the pigment to move a little bit. So, like that. So, that's our flower. I'm going to move on to the leaves now. And I'm going to mix a couple of colors here, just see what I like, like so. I'm kind of picking a brighter green to go with this pink, it's nice and springy and juicy the color palette. I might as well as I go just to swatch a couple of the colors here. And same thing as I've done there. I'm going to start with a clean brush, just wiggling it and then letting the colors move in like so. So 
same thing here and the key is not to have a hard edge when you're working with watercolor you can always correct things as you go because it's water soluble and then I'm going to mix up this color again I've got two more Sorry, I had to stop there. Both my boys are back from uh, tennis and being quite loud, so. Okay, so we've got this uh, leaf right here. Okay, so that's leaves done. And then let's let me show you how you can also create a really beautiful bright orange so you can take this opera pink and into that we're going to add a bit of this conacridon i'm going to clean it up first conacridon gold deep like so And then you have this super vibrant orange. So with that, I'm going to color in the berries and I have quite a lot here. So I might go into a smaller brush actually, even smaller than the one I have here. Mm. So I'll go with this one. You want to see the luminosity of uh, the watercolor so if you just go in with a bigger brush you might end up with like a dollop or like a drop of it which will look too dark and you won't see the transparency of it so i'm just going to go ahead and fill in all these berries you can also mix up slightly darker, slightly lighter, just to play with the variety and add some more character. But I'm just going to go ahead and fill the rest of them in. So I finished here and now I have added a little bit more of the opera pink into that same mix. And I have more of a coral pink now and I will do these round the berries with it. Sorry if you can hear any noise. It's a uh, Easter weekend, so it's Saturday today, and it's Easter Sunday tomorrow. So loads of families are out and about and enjoying the lovely weather that we have. We will be going to watch the new Mario movie that's coming out, or well, that came out, and just came out in the cinema. And then we're planning like barbecue for tomorrow and stuff. New fun things. All right, so I'm going to finish off with these two berries. Okay, it's finished. Um, have I mentioned that I use this pen here, so 0 0.1. Usually I do the outlining for my illustrations with this fountain pen, which is super fine and it's got water soluble ink. That's the most important, no, sorry, waterproofing. That's the most important part about these illustrations because you're going to go in with water. So in this case, this is a waterproof marker uh, or pigment, pigment ink. So water and fade proof pigment ink, uni pin fine liner. So I find it easier to work on a bit textured paper because sometimes the nib just kind of glides differently. Uh, whereas with this tip, it's much easier. So what I'm going to do now, just to create a berry effect, which is completely optional, I'm just going to add these like little elements, just like so, at the top here. And immediately, instead of little round balls, 
visually they look like berries so this is it this was so much fun and you can you know put together a color palette that you want to work with i went with green and pinks today just because i felt like really bright and springy weather outside uh, is kind of working well um so these are the pigment separations that you can see from these beautiful watercolors that we use from the ultimate palette and like i said both the botanical stamp set and the ultimate palette are available on lonacreates.com so i hope you enjoyed it have a lovely lively <laughs> have a lovely rest of the day and i will see you soon thanks for watching